Hello, ladies, gentlemen. Welcome and thank you for joining us on another episode of You. I am your host, Otamatan, aka J, from Kazoku no Otakus. And today we will be discussing, reviewing, uh, and overall taking a look at Fate Episode 7. That's correct, ladies and gentlemen. Episode 7 of Fate released today, and it was fantastic, and I'm going to explain why in just a few moments. But for those of you who are uninitiated and may not understand how these reviews work, I will give a review of what I thought about the episode at this point, right here in the time, in the bubble, um, right close to my head by this mic thing. Anyways, yeah, I'll be giving a review there uh, at that time mark. But before that, we're going to go ahead and go through a brief overview of the episode, and I'm going to detail the events that actually occurred in the episode. So if you want to avoid the spoilers, right there is your time. Uh, if you'd rather hear a complete breakdown of the episode before you watch it, or after you've watched it, I don't know which, I don't want to presume. But either way, if you want to hear a breakdown of the episode, stay tuned right now. If not, go ahead and skip to that point there. In any case, let's begin this epic journey. So picking up where the last episode left off, Sissigo hits Fiore with his car and Fiore comments how reckless he is. Turning the car sideways, he fires his gun, but Fiore is actually protected by claws. Totally didn't see that one coming, right? Uh, then the opening plays. Once again, I love this opening, dude. Like, at first, I didn't like it, but it slowly grew on me. And it's like haunting how perfect for the series it is. Ah, digress. Sissigo tells Claus as a mage is supposed to fight one-on-one -on -one fair and square, with Claus telling him he doesn't want to and really doesn't even care. Uh, pulling out a wand of some sort, Sissigo says he guesses he'll have to use it. Meanwhile, back at Mordred and Shirin, Mordred is on the ground and it's clear who has the advantage here, but Shirin is also actually injured himself. He claims he's been cornered by Mildred and requests retreat from Fiore, who then approves and they all leave. Uh, so the first battle of the Holy Grail War with Mordred and Sissigo ends in a draw. Sissigo and Mordred steal a car, and after retreating, Claus gets an earful from Fiore, who apparently didn't even know he tagged along. Getting back to Jack the Ripper, it's revealed the following the injuries. She is bedridden, and her mother, of course, is feeding her with what appears to be raw meat. I wonder what type, right? For those of you who've been watching the series, you probably already have a pretty good idea of whose meat that is. Um, yeah. Ugh. She mentions she can't heal her uh, because she's regrettably not a mage and questions what to do about Jack's arm. Jack says a meal would work and her mother brings her the last heart of a magus that they've been keeping in the fridge. Delicious. Gobbling it up heals her instantly. The next day, it's shown that John is actually walking through the town looking for something. Moving over to Sig, he asks his host what he thinks it means to be free. The two discuss it at length, but Sig doesn't understand it in the end. Back to John. She hits a trap and gets a vision of Shiroko to Mine. She comments she must meet that man and heads off towards the Red Faction's uh, fortress. Meanwhile, at the church, a sleeping Shiro awakens from his slumber following a dream of the past. Over to the Black Castle, we see preparations for an all-out war. Darnik and Vlad speak about when an attack will occur, and Vlad says it will be that night. Flashing over to the Lancer of Red, a.k.a. Karna, uh, walking up to a throne, it's shown that the one sitting atop the throne uh, is Shiro, surrounded by other servants. Shakespeare finally comes in making his appearance. Um, and with that, all of the Red Faction, save Mordred and Sisigo, have gathered. Shakespeare hits on the Queen of Assyria, which is Assassin, a.k.a. Semiramis, who is actually the one sitting on the throne upon closer inspection, because I didn't notice it initially. Uh, and Jean makes her way to Shiro, and at that moment, as she's approaching the castle, it's revealed the Red Faction has obtained the Aerial Garden of Babylon. Uh, and this is actually revealed to be Semiramis' noble phantasm, and the group proceeds to head towards the Black Castle via the sky. Back at the house, Sig ponders what he truly wants to do, looking out the window thinking of uh, everything that he'd been told about freedom and stuff like that, and trying to think of what he should do with the life that was given to him by Siegfried. Uh, Jean follows the castle of Babylon as it makes its way towards the Black Fortress, and the castle begins dropping bones which turn into skeletal servants. As they approach, they are spotted by Shirin, and Darnik arrives to tell Fiore to retreat. All the uh, servants take over and prepare for battle, while the masters retreat within the castle to safety. Darnik is ordered by Vlad to release Ryder and the Red Berserker, and does as he is told. Before he leaves, Claude forbids Fran from using her noble phantasm, and then he retreats inside. Vlad gives out orders and a pep talk to the Black Forces, and they all begin their movement towards the Red Fortress moving towards them in the sky. Back to the house, Sig thanks the old man for taking care of him and says he knows what he has to do. The old man gives him a belt he used to use, and then he puts Alstafo's sword on his waist. 
that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the episode. Yeah, so a lot went on this week. What did I think about it? Well, <laughs> to be honest with you guys, it was a fantastic episode. First of all, I think the last episode ending on that, that cliffhanger was the right call for this one. Um, we all knew it was going to happen. We knew Claus was going to come in to save the day uh, and everything like that. Fiori's not, they're not just going to kill off Fiori like that. There's no way. Um, plus, Fiori's like the good guy character. She's one of the very few actual positive characters on either side. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I didn't think that that was curtains for her immediately. But it was interesting to see. Um, they had mentioned Catalysts earlier. And I'm thinking that Saber's master, Saber of Black, Siegfried, his master was the one they showed, so I'm thinking that possibly he may be the catalyst for the um, pact agreement with the Berserker of Red. Um, so it's going to be kind of interesting to see what uh, what they do with Achilles and everything like that. I'm I'm pretty. I'm pre it, it was a pretty fantastic episode. It was definitely a builder episode, but it was a very well timed, well placed builder episode. There were like fate tends to do a couple of scenes where it kind of popped out, and it's like why. Um, but, you know, in the end, fate always has a way of kind of bringing it back full circle. So, little scenes like that, like, it, it's not like it was before. Um, in the early episodes, you had these little peaks, like, for example, when, before Sig had a name, he got up from the bed after he got freed, and he fell down and hit the floor, and then they came in, and he was leaning on the dresser. Um, but did we really need to know why he was in the floor? Or was it just acceptable to assume that he tried to escape and couldn't walk and got there? I mean, you know, some things you can leave to the imagination. I don't think it's really important to animate every individual cell. Obviously, there are some things that are better, just better left unsaid. You don't have to tread in into those waters or anything like that. And I think that's a big thing that the studio kind of doesn't do. They really like to go... Um, in depth into things so if there's something they have to establish they do it now as of late though and here's the big part about all of this the scenes like that where they flash over for seemingly no apparent reason have actually tied in pretty well and they've actually been pretty relevant so I can't complain too much about it um, but yeah like the whole episode was fantastic you see as you start to see all the black forces gathered together and it also pretty much showed that Shiro Kotamine is in charge of literally every red faction hero except for Mordred. So, I'm starting to think that my theory is a lot more plausible than originally thought. I think that that's what's going on here. I think Shiro's about to be the big bad of both sides. Now she's got Jean breathing down his neck as well. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see kind of what happens here. I'm really excited for it. I really am, you guys. Like, for real. Jean d'Arc is already one of my favorite characters of the whole series, and I really like Sig. I just kind of wish he'd quit being a Shinji. Like, quit being a whiny little bitch. Just do it. Get in the fucking robot, man. Um, and, and actually, at the end of the episode, he kind of does get in the fucking robot, so to speak. So we're going to see kind of where that leads and what his decision is and what his choice is and what he winds up doing with the strength that he's been given and with the life he's been given by the great hero Siegfried. Um, I'm very curious to see how this battle is going to go down. And it's also super early for this battle, is it not? Like, we're this is a 24-episode run, they're saying, right? Well, we're only on episode 7 now, so we're talking about a penultimate battle on episode 7 out of 24? Like, the hell? <laughs> it's awful early, and I've said that from the beginning, that the pacing seems like they're moving awful quickly for a full 24 episode run. But supposedly, that's what the studio says, so I don't know if they're going to do the first half is this uh, Grail War, and then the second half is maybe about Shiro's background or something, Shiro Kotamine's background. I have no clue how they're going to do it. Um, but I do know that, uh, that it is pretty awesome that we're already getting to see all of this right out the jump. It doesn't feel rushed despite that either. Like, it feels well-timed and well-placed. We didn't see any fights for the first, what, four episodes? I think it was right at the end of the third episode, maybe. But the point being, it, it, it's not all just shoved into a box. There are timing, there is timing to it and everything like that. So, yeah, I, I really like the pacing of the series. I really like the way it's, it's doing things. Uh, the Aerial Garden of Babylon was an interesting addition, and Simi Ramos is basically turning out to be a goddess all her own. She is basically the direct uh, opposition to Vlad at this point. She and Vlad kind of play the same role in both organizations, but really Shiro is the is the puppet master. So I'm I'm pretty interesting interested in seeing what happens. And also, quick question: Where does Sisigo and Mordred fit into this battle? Because neither of them are even present. 
Shiro hasn't called him back, and even if they he did, they don't trust Shiro. Morja nor Sisigo trust Shiro. So, I'm not sure how everything's going to go here, but I'm pretty damn excited. As if you couldn't tell, right? No, I, I really am, you guys. Like, it, it is super, I'm super pumped for this. I've been waiting for this for, for, for the last few episodes, and now it's here. So, what did I think about the episode in a numerical value? If I was to assign a numerical value to it, I would probably have to give this episode a 10 out of 10. Like, it was a fantastic episode. It was a bridge episode, but it was still a fantastic one. You had that little bit of action at the beginning where the fight between Sisigo and Fiore carried over. And then, uh, you know, towards the end, the rest is just everybody getting ready, but just the, the pump. You know, it's kind of like when you go for a workout, right? And you put on, put in your earphones, you put your your phone on random and shove it in your pocket, right? And then all of a sudden, out of your out of your earphones, dun, 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 and Eye of the Tiger comes on, right? Like, you start to get pumped. You're like, yeah, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to do this. I'm going to lift these weights. Or, like, if you go to go on a run or something, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be physical activity. Maybe you're, maybe you're playing a game and you just hear that song into your jam and you're like, oh, yeah, you're going down, motherfuckers. The point being, this episode is that song. This is the, the calm before the storm. This is the prep episode. And it was fantastically paced. It was wonderfully illustrated. It didn't really waste any frames. I think it was a great episode. I really enjoyed it, and I think you guys will as well. Um, in particular, finally seeing kind of Sig get in the robot was well worth it as well. Because I've been waiting for that for episodes now. Ever since uh, Jean revealed everything about uh, what she had seen about him and everything like that. And how she was lying. And oh, yes. I'm ready. My body is ready. What kind of role will Sig play in this war? What kind of role will Jean play in this role in this war? Because she's supposed to be out of it. She's supposed to just be watching, but yet she's not. She's actually running after the Red Legion because she needs to meet Shiro Kotamine. Why does she need to meet Shiro Kotamine? And what does the flashback mean? These questions and more, hopefully answered in future episodes. <sighs> But don't take my word for it. I'm just some otaku in front of a PC, as per always. You can always just find out for yourself, if you'd like. But either way, you can comment down in the comments section to let us know what you thought, because we are reading those and we are responding to those in real time. You could always give it a like if you liked it, because we like it when you like it. And of course, as always, do feel free to subscribe, because we could always use subscribers. We do appreciate you guys coming out and supporting us. Every single subscriber we get is important to us, so please, if you have the time, if you have the inclination, if you enjoy our channel or any of our content, please do feel free to subscribe. That way you can get more content. The more subscribers we have, the more we know that something works, the more likely we are to take that feedback and create videos that you want to see. What more can I say? Catch me on the Twitch. You guys know where to find me. I have a schedule up there. Most of the time it rings true and foregoing some earth-shattering event. I'm usually online at all times. In any case, I am Otamatan from Kazoku no Takus, And I just wanted to remind you guys that you may feel free to leave your world and join ours if you get bored of yours. Oh, I did it out of order. Haha, -ha, gotcha. See, I gotta spice it up every now and then. In any case, thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate it. I'll catch you guys online and in the next review. Peace!